y'all. It's J. Cal Derome, Stan Clear Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. This Saturday, May the 7th, yours truly, J. Cal Derome, will be in Las Vegas for the big fight weekend. Canelo Alvarez versus Amir Khan at the new T Mobile Arena just opened up for its very first boxing event. And I'm very excited to be going to Las Vegas to see this fight right here and meet all the boxing fans that are out there that are going to be tuning into this fight. Now, I believe that this fight is going to do better than what Mayweather Berto and also Pacquiao versus Bradley did in their rematch. I think the pay-per-view numbers are going to be very interesting. A lot of people are not giving Amir Khan a lot of respect. They feel like this guy has a glass jaw and he's going to get knocked out very quickly in this fight. But I believe that Amir Khan will give a better performance than what anybody expects. Do I believe that he's going to win? No, I don't. I hope that he wins because I'm an Amir Khan fan and I want to go out there and root for the underdog. This guy is a welterweight going up two weight divisions to face a true light heavyweight in the middleweight division. But they're fighting at a catch weight of 155 pounds. Canelo Alvarez is loving this weight right here because he feels like he is not big enough for the middleweight division. Let's make this clear. That's a lie. This guy is ready to take on Galeni Golovkin and any other big middleweight like Daniel Jacobs in the 160 pound division. But he chooses to fight at 155. The fans, whether they accept it or not, it is what it is. But Amir Khan is a former outstanding world champion that he also was an outstanding Olympian that won silver medal in the Olympics at the age of 17 years old. This guy has boxing skills. He is a very good fighter. He's always been a very good fighter and he has tremendous heart. His heart is without a question or a doubt. He's willing to step into the ring against any fighter out there. It's the fighting spirit of Khan again. Hard right hand by Khan. What a body shot by Khan. Unbelievable heart from Amir Khan here. Boy, when Khan looks good, he looks really good. And now Khan fires one last combination in the center of the ring. can't say about a lot of fighters out there today. A lot of fighters are out there for the money. Of course, Amir Khan is making a very good payday to face Canelo Alvarez. But he could have made a bigger payday against Kell Brook and a fight that was more even. This fight right here is a very big risk. I like what Amir Khan is doing. He's taking a page out of the old books of the guys that back in the days like Roberto Duran and also even Manny Pacquiao when he moved up from the lightweight division to face Oscar De La Hoya. Even though De La Hoya was a junior middleweight at the time and came down to welterweight and drained himself, it was a big risk that many people thought Manny Pacquiao was not going to win, that it was a big threat for Manny Pacquiao. Even Sugar Ray Leonard coming out of retirement to go up and wait and face Marvin Hagler. They felt like the man was old, the man was retired, and he had no chance against a beast like Marvin Marvelous Hagler. Now with Amir Khan, Khan is a guy that has a weak chin, but he has so much skills. He's a very good athlete. He has good foot movement. He has great hand speed, and he has boxing skills. I haven't seen the jab from Amir Khan, and he has a very good jab that he used against Paulie Malignaggi years ago. And I would love to see that jab return. He has a very good trainer. Virgil Hunter is a defensive trainer. He trains the likes of Andre Ward, and also he trained Andre Berto for his matchup this past weekend. Can he help improve Amir Khan on his defense? to not get knocked out because the odds makers are putting heavy money down that he's going to get knocked out in the early rounds. But I see this as a moral victory if he makes it to the 12th and final round. And even if he loses, the effort that he put in to go up against such a big man and put on the best fight that he could possibly fight will be an accomplishment by itself. Amir Khan has to stay on the outside, using that jab, using that in and out movement to not stand in front of the bigger fighter. Canelo Alvarez is a strong fighter that's gonna go to the body. That is their game plan, is to break the body and keep Amir Khan stationary and not moving as much so that they could go to the head and knock him out. Canelo Alvarez has a beautiful straight right hand that is sneaky. And if he's able to land, which we believe he will, he's going to hurt Amir Khan and possibly put him down. Combination by Alvarez. Alvarez targeting right hand shots. 
thudding shots. These are sound effect punches. Alvarez landing everything. What a performance by Canelo Alvarez. The most electrifying of Canelo Alvarez's career. Can Amir Khan weather the storm like he did against Marcos Madonna, who was also a hard puncher and a pressure fighter? I believe that Amir Khan has the capability and the skills to do so. And many boxing fans believe that he does have the capability to pull off an upset, but we, deep in our hearts, don't believe that he can win the fight. But we're going to have to wait and see for the fight to play out. And I'm very excited for this fight because it's going to be a big fight weekend. A lot of activities are going to be going down in Las Vegas. It's Cinco de Mayo weekend. A lot of Mexicans, a lot of fans from England are going to come down. The British is going to come strong and support their man, Amir Khan, for the great effort that he's going to put on the ring that night in a brand new arena. Expect to be a very good Highly entertaining card. A lot of fighters on that card. You have Curtis Stevenson fighting a very good prospect. And Patrick Teixeira. You have also Mauricio Herrera stepping into the ring against Frankie Gomez. Which is a very good fight matchup right there. And you also have David Lemieux. Hard hitting puncher against Jersey boy Glenn Tapia. And that's going to be a fight right there that's going to end in a knockout. And David Lemieux could be possibly a front runner for Canelo Alvarez later on in the year because I know a lot of fight fans, especially myself, want to see Galeni Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez get it on in September of this year. It's a fight that the fight fans are demanding right now. The public wants it. It's a hot ticket seller. It could go down in Texas this year. They could sell out the arena, but Canelo Alvarez and Oscar De La Hoya are looking to marinate this fight right here. And they do not want to fight Galeni Golovkin right now. They want to build it up perhaps next year. But let's hope that the WBC and the fight fans could put pressure on Golden Boy to make this fight happen this year. Because WBC organization has stated that they will strip Canelo Alvarez of their title if he does not fight Galeni Golovkin. We have to wait and see how that plays out. So tune in to HBO Pay-Per-View this Saturday, May 7th, Las Vegas, Nevada at the T-Mobile Arena. Jay Calderon will be in the building. Now, let's do a recap on the fight that just took place this weekend. We had on Showtime a doubleheader between super middleweight champions First up, it was James DeGale from England pulling on a tough performance against a fighter by the name of Porky Medina. Medina came in very strong, putting on a lot of pressure against James DeGale. But I just like the style of James DeGale with his boxing skills. He was able to use his jab, go to the body and head, and move in that fight. He made it a lot tougher than what it was because I saw him winning the fight clearly eight rounds to four. Other people saw it a lot closer because they liked the pressure and the body work of Medina. But nevertheless, I saw James DeGale, as well as the judges, winning clearly this fight right here. Now he sets up a fight with the main event fighter that was fighting that night, which was Badu Jack versus Lucien Butte. This was an excellent fight that we saw from Badu Jack. Continuing to grow in the ring. His last performance against George Groves was a very good performance. And this performance right here was even better. He looked good against Lucien Butte than what James DeGale did in his performance against Butte. I see Badu Jack is a very strong fighter that can switch up his style and box and go toe to toe. Savannah Harris Badu Jack. Medina, and that is that. He is a good, solid, super middleweight, and I'm excited to watch these two guys step into the ring later on this year because it's going to be a great matchup to unify the titles of the WBC and IBF super middleweight crown to be the king of the 168-pound division. And I think that James DeGale has the edge in that fight with his boxing skills and his movement. I'm a switcher up. I'm predominantly southpaw, but I switch it up in the ring and it's all natural. This ain't gonna be no trash match. So I'm gonna come out, stick it right on his toes for a lot of punches, and let's see how he deals with that. But I do not 
count out Badu Jack at all. I think Badu Jack has a very strong possibility of winning that fight, and it's gonna be a great fight once that fight is made. Also, on Fox Television Network, it went down in Carson, California, when we had the rematch between Andre Berto and Victor Ortiz. It lived up to the hype as another excited, explosive affair between these two. When Victor Ortiz dropped Berto early in the fight, he caught him with a flash knockdown. It was a very good straight left hand that landed right on the button. Berto went down, but he was able to collect himself and get back into the fight. Victor was looking strong, was looking very patient, looking very confident in the first few rounds. But then in that third round, it was a shot that came out of nowhere from Andre Berto, a half uppercut that landed right on the button and Victor Ortiz went crashing down. He was badly hurt. He didn't know where he was. Berto jumped all over him, landed a few more punches to put him down on the canvas. And when he got up, I saw that he did not beat the count, but Jack Reese gave him an opportunity to get back into this fight. He asked him several times, do you want to continue? And there was no response from Victor Ortiz. And Berto, is that a slip? No. That was a knockdown. Down. Straight left hand. Oh, Berto's title, he lost to Floyd Mayweather Jr. in his first event. Uppercut Ortiz is down. And he's hurt. Gets to his feet. Wobbly. Foggy. Right hand. Berto. Can he finish him this time? Another left hand. Ortiz is down. It's you over. Just you want to Is it? Wait. You want to continue? Look at me. It's over. It was a sign of submission from Victor Ortiz that he wanted no more of Andre Berto's assault. Andre Berto got his revenge that he's been waiting for for the last five years. It gave him brief life back into his career for another big fight opportunity on the horizon, possibly against Danny Garcia sometime in the summer. But I will hope that Danny Garcia looks to fight someone like Kell Brook. It's a much bigger matchup between two undefeated welterweight champions than to fight somebody like Andre Berto. I think a guy like Berto should fight someone like Adrian Broner, or perhaps Errol Spence Jr. That will be a great matchup and a great step up for Spence to go up against a guy like Andre Berto. But we have to wait and see how that fight plays out. I would just like to thank everyone that has been watching me on YouTube. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Also, follow me on Instagram and join that Facebook boxing group page, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and subscribe.